Hello there, and thank you so much for joining me today for the Romero Brito inspired animal drawings. Romero Brito, if you're not familiar with him, was born in Brazil and has become very well known in America as a pop artist. His playful animals, patterns, and colors have really captured the imagination of all kinds of people. They love his work, his paintings, his, pa his paintings, his drawings, and his sculptures are very popular and actually available online for purchase. So today we're going to draw a cat and a dog in the style of Romero Brito. I'm going to walk you through the steps for drawing your animals, adding playful patterns, and bold pop colors. Let's get started with the drawing and then I'll walk you through the color process and patterns. Okay, let's get started. This is a Romero Brito inspired dog that I've drawn. And you see that I'm using just simple copy paper uh, for a project that we're gonna do today. Uh, we're gonna need pencil. And you don't need a uh, fancy pencil, you just need um, regular pencil. It's a great idea to have an eraser. It's a very good idea to have a black marker for the bold outlines that you're going to be doing later like you see here and I recommend using um, brightly colored you know bright blues pinks oranges yellows if you have those neon markers they're great for coloring in your Romero Brito animal and I would suggest a couple simple color pencils maybe for coloring in your background, just because um, you don't want to waste a whole marker trying to color in the background. Alternatively, you could always cut out your animal and just mount it on colored paper and that would look amazing too. Okay, why don't we get started? We're gonna draw two animals today. I'm gonna walk you through drawing the dog and then I'm gonna walk you through drawing the cat and then you could decide which one you wanna spend time drawing um, at length. So why don't we get started with the dog first? And we're gonna use an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and it's gonna be portrait orientation, meaning vertical, up and down. We're gonna start with using our pencil lightly because when we use it lightly, it's much easier to erase a mistake. And then you can go over it darker with a marker. This is actually a saying. <clears throat> we have an art. Draw light till you get it right, then go darker with a marker. <clears throat> so let's start at the top here. We're gonna do a slight arch right here at the top of his head. We're going to add two side arches. So here's the top of his head. Now we're gonna form a crown shape. We're gonna put a circle here and a circle here. We're gonna bring that crown in and in, or maybe a little bit more. And then they're gonna go up and up to, and I'm gonna move this one over just a little bit, just a little bit so we can get a more central point for our crown. And it seems kind of funny, uh, a dog with a crown, but that's sort of the playful nature of Romero Brito. He often does things like that, and I actually really like it. So we're gonna take this edge of the head down just a little past the crown. You see, I've just made two little additional lines going out and slightly downwards. And we're gonna come down lightly at a slight diagonal. And then we're gonna join the two shapes down here. Now attached to the fit head are two ears. So we're gonna take two diagonal lines outward from the top of the head. We're gonna curve it down again, not quite as far as the bottom of the face. Curve it down again. He's like the two big floppy ears of the dog. And then we're gonna bring it in and bring it in like that. We're gonna form two very simple round eyes, one here, one here for the dog. And then to make his face look like he's got a spot on it, we're gonna have a curve go around one of the eyes and come up here. 
Next, we're gonna draw a little triangle nose. And that's what I like about Brito. He uses a lot of simple shapes. It makes it easy to replicate one of his ideas. And then like the kind of typical kind of mouth dog, I mean, I'm sorry, mouth you see on a cat or a dog, we're gonna do like a J shape outward and another J shape outward. Now let's get down to his body. Not only does he have a crown, but he has a little bow tie, which is really also very cute and playful way that Romero Brito likes to dress up his animals. So we're gonna add two little diagonals right here. Those will be the outside of our bow ties. We're gonna have them each come in at another diagonal towards the center with a rounded shape in the middle, connecting those two diagonals. That's basically his bow tie. Now let's go from the center of that circle, go downwards to make the legs and the paws. So I'm gonna move my paper up a little bit so you can see better. Here comes one paw, bring it over a little and stop. Let's come to the outside of the bow tie, bring another line down for the second paw. Let's have it not go as far down, rounded line, and then just bring it back to the other paw. So you have two legs, paws, and a bow tie. Now we're gonna form the back of the dog. So we're gonna start right here at the bottom of his face. We're gonna come out with an arch like that. We're gonna go out, add a curve, come back, and that is going to be a tail. And now we're going to use this placement of the two feet to add a back foot. So we're gonna come up and over to make yet another paw. Come down a little bit here. Now we're gonna be making the leg join from here to that leg. But because he's sit sitting, you're gonna have that leg curved. So I want you to take it up into a big curve that goes past the tail. Don't worry about the line you're gonna to have to erase in a minute. Comes back down like that, and then curves over to the foot. So I'm just gonna go back in here and erase that little extra line. You might find you have to do that too. So that is basically the dog. Now, Brito loves to add patterns to his dog. So before I get into the patterns, I just wanna show you uh, what he might do because I have a whole series of patterns to show you that come from the kind of patterns that he loves to do. So he loves any pattern that involves line, polka dots, hearts, wiggles. He even likes to use this signature of TG. I had to do a little research to find out what that TG means. Brick patterns, vertical, horizontal, uh, circles, equal signs, swirls, flowers. These are all very simple to do and you can even make up your own patterns. So we're gonna add those in a minute. But first, let's go back to the dog for a moment. So we basically have his head, his two ears, his crown, and his body. Let's leave him alone now and go to the cat. Then we're gonna add some patterns to each one, and then you can decide which one you think you should do with color. So I'm gonna put this dog aside. This time we're going to do the cat, as I said. And the cat is just as simple as the dog. We're gonna start again with another eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, because I really want you to feel like you can pretty much fill the page with your animal and not make it too small. So I'm gonna start about a couple inches down from the top, and I'm gonna put one dot here and one dot there. Those dots are just gonna help me uh, make sure the ears, which, which is what I'm gonna start with, are balanced and basically in the same position across the page. So I'm gonna add one large triangular here, ear here, and one large triangular ear here. And now I'm just going to take a line and bridge. Bridge those two triangle ears like that. Now let's continue the line downwards slightly and just slightly inwards. Downward slightly and inward slightly. Now we're forming the cat's head. 
we're gonna come down at an angle to about the midpoint here and down at an angle. Diagonals again, he loves those diagonals. And that's basically the cat's head. We're gonna put a couple triangle inserts for the cat's ear here and the cat's ear there. We're gonna add some fun. Well, actually let's, yeah, let's do the eyes first. Let's do one big eye here as if, you know when the cat gets very relaxed and purrs and they close their eyes. Well, that's kind of what we're gonna get here. That look of a very relaxed cat. We're gonna put some lashes because again, this is just Romero Brito being playful and cartoony to a certain degree. We're gonna put a nose, just simple triangle nose again. And we're gonna do the same kind of mouth we did on the other animal. We're gonna come up with a big wide J and another big wide J. And I'm gonna fix that chin so it's a little bit more centered. I feel like it should be a little, a little more centered here. There, I'm happy with that. Now let's move on to the cat's body. So I'm gonna shift my paper upwards just a little bit. And once again, he likes that bow tie. So that bow tie is gonna come in over here. First, a big round bubble that doesn't go quite to the end and another very large round bubble. And he's gonna put a big circle connecting the two. So it's very similar to the one on the dog, although this is more rounded instead of being triangular. Okay, out from the edge of that bow tie is gonna come a curve. Let's do the same thing on the other side, a curve. Can you see where we're going with this? This is gonna lead to the leg shortly. We're gonna bring it all the way down, almost like we're making a heart. And I think that's probably something he had intended, almost like a heart. Now let's go back to the bow tie right here in the center. We're gonna bring one line straight down and we're gonna put one big toe here and another big toe there. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, one big toe here and another big toe there. And we're gonna bring those legs, now these are gonna be the paws that go to the legs, right up to the bow tie, like that. Now that helps us to see where the feet are gonna go. The back feet are gonna come down and go in, come down and go in. And I'm just gonna erase that little extra line there. Okay, so you, oh, what did I forget? Of course, whiskers. Let's not forget the whiskers on the cat. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, what really makes a Brito a Brito are the patterns. So like I said before, I showed you some patterns that Brito might use in his work and they are playful. They're not everywhere in every aspect of the animal but he does love patterns. So you can get a sneak peek of what patterns you might want to try. And you can, of course, make up your own patterns. So let's add some patterns to this cat. And before we do that, I'm just going to put a ground line right here just to separate the wall. Like the, our cat's sitting on the ground here, so we're just going to put that there. Okay, so let's just add some patterns maybe in the ear. So we're going to close off that part of the ear and we're gonna just take, oh, I don't know. He likes polka dots, so I'm gonna do polka dots. You might do something else, but that's just what I'm gonna pick. He likes to leave the face pretty simple. He doesn't put a lot of pattern there, but if you wanna do pattern in the other ear, you could, of course, do that. But in the bow tie, you're definitely gonna see pattern. So maybe I'll do a, um, like a uh, checkerboard pattern here. So I'm just gonna go like this. On the other side, maybe I'll do some of his swirls. I like those swirls are fun and they're easy to do. The point is his patterns are not hard to recreate. You can create your own, choose your own, or copy some of his. In the leg, oh, I think I'm gonna do flowers. I like those fun little flowers that he has. So I'm gonna do a bunch of flowers. Some of them may go off the leg like that one. And others will stay on the leg. I don't mind if the flowers go off the leg. That to me is A-OK. -okay. 
and I might even put a little flower there. In the other leg, I'm gonna split that into two parts. So I'm gonna put a line right here. And on the upper part, I think um, maybe I'll do the hearts because I like those heart shapes. And on the bottom part, I think um, I will, I'll leave it plain, but over in the lake here, I'm gonna put something. I'm gonna put, um, let's take a look again. Maybe you need some ideas too. Which one would you do? I'm thinking uh, dots maybe. I'm thinking, I really do like that TG shape. Maybe you wanna do your own initials, but I like that TG. So I'm gonna do TG, TG, just because it's something that he does. But again, you know, I could do DB for Doris Benter if I wanted, but I'm gonna do TG, okay? And I think the rest I'm gonna leave solid, yeah, okay. So what I would like to do now is go back to the dog briefly and think about what kind of patterns we might be able to add to the dog. But before we do that, I'm gonna do the same thing I did to the cat. I'm gonna add a little line separating the floor from the wall. I'm gonna take a quick look at the patterns. Hmm, what could I do? Lots of patterns to choose from. Okay, I got a few ideas now. I'm gonna separate that ear into sections so I can do a few different patterns. I think the first one I'm gonna do is I really love the uh, checkerboard. Then I think I'm gonna do some V shapes. And maybe I'll do a zigzag. Okay. Over here, I'm gonna leave this solid he tends to like to keep the face solid and that gives your attention to the patterns in other areas. So I'm gonna put a line here. I'll do a hashtag. You guys are all familiar with the hashtag symbols. They're all over the place with Instagram and everything these days. Hashtag this and hashtag that. So I'll do that. I think I'm gonna add a circle inside of the bow tie. Oh, and then of course I love the hearts. So I'm gonna put some hearts right here and maybe uh, go back to the swirls again. I just like those swirls. So I'm gonna add a few of those swirls over here. Okay, oh, I think I forgot to add the leg here. Let's put that pencil leg in there, finish off that leg. And, oh, I know. I love the idea of the corkscrew curls that he has. So swirly, swirly, swirl, like that. And I think I'm gonna put some lines. This is the big shape. So I wanna put some lines in here that I can fill with different things. I think I'm just gonna keep it relatively simple. Just diagonal lines. And I'm going to skip in between. And here I think I'm going to put large circles. If you're familiar with the artist Yayoi Kusama, she loves to use circles in her work. I'm going to keep that solid, 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 and a few other things solid. So you have a cat, with patterns, you have a dog with patterns. What I would like you to do next, on choose whichever one you like, whichever one you think you're gonna wanna add color to. And then I want you to go over it with a black marker. And I want you to outline the outside shape of your animal as well as the patterns. Don't color them in, just outline them like this. Doing the black dots here. I'm gonna do this diagonal line, dog's paw. And I'm gonna go back and do these diagonal lines. 
nice dark black. If you don't have a black, it's a dark blue, dark green, a dark purple. Anything dark will work great. So I'm gonna give you some time now to go ahead and outline your animal and the patterns you made. And by the way, you can always go back in like I'm doing now with an eraser and erase any pencil lines you don't wanna see later. Very easy to do. Okay, I'll join you in a moment once you have your animal outlined and we'll start talking about color. Okay, welcome back. I'm wondering which one are you going to choose? Are you going to add color to your cat or color to your dog? Well, last time I did this project, I did the dog. So to mix it up a little bit, today I'm gonna to do the cat. Now, Romero Brito's animals often have lots of bright colors, pale blues, bright reds, yellows, greens. But as I said, he often keeps the face rather simple with maybe a solid color or just a few colors like of the elephant here. So keep that in mind when you add your colors. You can even include white in your patterns. You don't have to have say blue, red, it could be blue, white. So we're gonna go ahead and start adding color to the cat. And I recommend you use um, brightly colored Sharpies. If you don't have Sharpies, regular markers will do. I like to mix in some highlighters. And of course, we've already done our black outline, so we're all set to add some color. Uh, you can use color pencil if you want to also. That's another nice alternative. And I'm gonna go ahead and start by adding this color to the ear. And I've decided to just do sort of an aqua blue, nice and bright. And of course, to make my pattern and my ear insert stand out more, I'm gonna make sure I choose something that's in contrast to the blue. So I'm gonna start with this blue, but then I'm going to make sure I add maybe a bright pink for the ear insert, maybe some of that neon yellow for the circles. But let's just start with a little bit of blue. I like that. Okay, let's see. I have a really pretty neon pink here. I think I'm gonna use that for the ear insert. And I think I'm gonna use the same color on the other side, like that. As I said, I wanna do something really pop and bright next to that aqua, so I'm gonna use my neon yellow here. Regular yellow would look good too, actually. Um, <clears throat> For the cat's nose, I'm gonna go back to that nice hot pink. He does tend to pick colors for things like that that you would expect the animal to have. I'm gonna keep the face plain for now, <clears throat> but I'm gonna go down to the bow tie and I think I'm gonna bring in some red. So I'm gonna do a little checkerboard pattern, red, I could do red and black, I could if I wanted. So if this one's red, that will be the alternative color. So I'm gonna do all the red spaces first, and then I'll decide what color I wanna do the other shapes. What do you think? I think it should be something really bright. And I do have a really great Green here. Now red and green are complements, and that means when they stand next to each other, they make each other look brighter. They're sometimes hard on the eyes. Like think about it. When do you wear red and green? Well, if you if you celebrate um, Christmas, you might wear red and green that time of year. Most of the time, you don't wear it because it's too wild and loud. So you're not going to find yourself wearing that color too often. I think I'm gonna take a bright orange and see, I'm just gonna go right over my patterns. I can keep pattern lines black <clears throat> and not even add any color inside of them and just use it as a line pattern. That works perfectly. 
Now for the legs, I'm thinking to myself, hmm, what do I have here? Well, I did like that lemon yellow, so I think I'm gonna bring that back in right here as a light color. This. Love that neon yellow. Highlighters are great, but they do run out of color quickly, so sometimes you have to have a couple extra nearby. On the other side, I want to do something a little more subtle, not quite as bright, but fun. Nonetheless, I think I'll go with... Let's try... Hmm. A light pink. This is a light pink that is not... <clears throat> it's not a highlighter. It's just a pale pink. And I think that's good since I already have like a neon right next to it. And again, I'm just using the black letters. <clears throat> Pardon me. As a uh, just a pattern, just a line pattern. Well, I think we should use red for the hearts. And you know, I'm gonna mix another material in here. I'm gonna use some color pencil and I'm gonna use it for the cat face. Rather than leave it all white, I'm gonna get a pale blue and I'm going to use that to shade in the cat face very, very lightly. So you can consider doing that too. <clears throat> if you want to add a little color. I'm gonna let you go ahead and finish coloring in your animal. And then I wanna come back and show you how to do the background. And the background is going to be done using what I'm using right now, which is color pencil. So, finish this face on my own. I'm gonna come back and you can finish your animal on your own. And remember, you can always stop the video whenever you need to. If you need to slow down, you wanna see how I did something, how to draw the animal again, whatever it is, don't feel like you have to go at the same pace as me. You could watch this video over a couple days and finish it slowly or say, oh, I just wanna rewind it and see how she drew the dog again. Let's do that, no problem. That's the beauty of having a pre-recorded video. Okay, so I just finished the cat's face. I'm gonna let that be. I'm gonna finish this cat on my own. I'll show you my finished cat in a minute. I want you to go ahead and finish coloring your cat. Then we'll talk about doing the background. See you soon. Hey, welcome back. So at this point, you have colored in your animal. I chose to do the cat out of the two choices. So if you take a look at my other one, my dog, you can see that the background, which is just composes of two parts, a wall and a floor, I used color pencil. You could use crayons, you could use markers. Markers, you just spend a lot of time coloring. That's why I like color pencil. I would stick with something light, maybe a color that picks up a color you used earlier, like the yellow. And here I use the blue, which picks up some of the blue here. So I'm looking at the cat and I'm saying, well, you know, I really like that I have uh, some orange here. I like the pink. And I actually like this green. So I was thinking to myself that I would do a uh, pink with my color pencil for the background, the wall. And I could do the, um, the green or the orange for the floor. Now the trick here is I think to keep the color pencil very light. Now you notice I used the color pencil in the cat's face rather than lose, leave it white before. And I think that was effective because again, you don't want to draw so much attention to those big bright areas as well as get the eye moving more on with the fun patterns and bright colors you used earlier. So I'm just going to use large, lightweight strokes. Notice how I'm using my whole wrist to go back and forth just to fill in that background. You may want to put a paper underneath like I'm doing here. So if you go off, it's not a big deal. You just go onto that other sheet of paper rather than onto your table. So you can do this part much quickly 
more quickly than you did um, the earlier part because you're not trying to color in intricate patterns, designs, or color around shapes. Another thing you could do as an alternative to color pencil, crayon, or markers, you could use watercolor. Now, if you're gonna use watercolor, it might be beneficial to work on a heavier weight paper to start, only because the watercolor will absorb better into heavier weight paper than it will uh, simple copy paper. But you know what we're doing these days? We're using what we have. We're not trying to send people out to buy things that, you know, difficult to get right now. So let's stick with things we have already at home. And most people have copy paper, just plain white paper or manila paper or scrap paper. So we're using that. Color pencils, again, if that's a luxury for you, use crayons, use markers. But if you want to experiment with watercolor, I would do a light wash. Again, a, a, a light color, a yellow, a pale blue. I would not go heavy. But another bold uh, thing you can do, though, is cut out your animal and put it against black paper. That can give you a really bold finish, and you won't have to worry about coloring the background. So I just did the top in a pink. I'm going to do the bottom, I think, in a green. So again, I like the way it picks up on the green that I used in the bow tie. You choose what you want. I'm gonna let you go ahead and finish your background, and then I'm gonna come back to sum up the project and talk a little bit about it. more to you for just a moment. Okay, so have fun, finish your background. Okay, soon. welcome back for the final phase. Whether you chose to do the cat like I did, or the dog in the Romero Brito style. I hope you enjoyed this because now that you have two drawings, you could actually go back and do the other one. Brito is a pop artist who is contemporary, fun, playful, and just a great inspiration for many. I hope you enjoyed this program today. I'm Doris Benter of Library Arts, and I hope that I can join you again soon for another fun art program. Take care.